it's a slippery slope when you start kind of talking about the things you like doing as part of your spiritual process, right? Because the spiritual process has nothing to do with preference. Nothing, you guys. That's, I mean, there, what could be more important than that realization that the spiritual process has nothing to, to do with whatever you like doing? Has nothing to do with preference, but it has nothing to do with, you know, what you, it has nothing to do with preference either way, if you see what I mean, right? So what, what is an upaya, what is an effective method, um, is just a completely separate issue from what people like doing, and they easily mix them up together. And it takes vigilance and, 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 and discernment to be able to separate them, you know? Um, so this is challenging, especially when, what are you hearing in the whole spiritual world, you know, or the quasi-spiritual world, or the spiritual culture, whatever we want to call it, is like this term, resonate. That, it, that resonates with me, right? The vast majority of times that people are using this term, they mean, I like that. <laughs> it pleases me. And the problem is, you see, if you are your own guru and you do whatever resonates with you, you're just following the path of preference. And nobody got to spiritual awakeness through preference, ever. So that's an important, um, you know, kind of thing to realize. But maybe you don't, maybe, and maybe you, whoever it is, doesn't want spiritual awakeness, actually. Maybe that's not ever what you wanted. Maybe what you always wanted was to maximize what you like in your life. Maybe you wanted to maximize pleasurable experiences. That's a perfectly legitimate goal. It's just that when we confuse it with spirituality, we run into problems and, and subtle forms of suffering that later become obvious forms of suffering.